Hello and welcome back to Mini Discoveries. Potentially these videos are ending soon as we take the first tentative steps back towards normality, if such thing even still exists. But what I wanted to do today was to share something with you that's brought me a great deal of happiness and manic grinning throughout the various lockdowns we've had and the socially isolating situations, and that is getting to know a blackbird. If you've watched any of the previous Discover Nature videos, you'll be familiar with this blackbird, who I christened Beaky, because I have a rich and vibrant imagination. I can't really remember how it all began, but it was sometime around last spring. The earliest footage I've got is way back last year, 2020, in March. I seem to have first encounter him right after I dug the vegetable patch and Beaky came in and was turfing through all the soil, looking for juicy worms and grubs and anything like that. Quite bold or brazen, I don't know, it struck my attention just how little he cared about my presence. So I could be standing there filming, didn't bat an eyelid, or even a nictitating membrane. When I move away from here, I'm gonna miss him. So I started noticing Beaky around more and more, and how can I tell it's the same blackbird, you may ask? Well, it's a very good question. Um, yeah, I guess the answer is to do with behaviour. Beaky was the only tame blackbird, and I felt it was unlikely that it would be, firstly, multiple male blackbirds in one garden tolerating one another, and having multiple male blackbirds that were both tame just seemed unlikely. So I presume that the bird that I encountered, Beaky, was the same one, the same sort of tame-ish blackbird each time. Later on in the year, Beaky would get a distinctive mark, a kind of white fleck or patch down the side of his face. I think this is due to both kind of wear and tear and feather shedding, but possibly the young blackbirds kind of pecking, trying to get the food out of his mouth, might have ch -ch -ch sheared off some feathers. Beaky is quite territorial. A bit like this dog here. This dog's a bit territorial, aren't you? Say hello to the good people. Say hello. That's my crotch. I think it's nearly dinner time. Beaky was definitely the dominant blackbird in the area. I saw him chasing away other male blackbirds, any that were entered, sometimes occasionally female blackbirds, and also song thrushes. Very much, this is mine, not yours. Our relationship developed really because of three factors. Firstly, I didn't have a lot to do in lockdown initially. Secondly, I had a large bag of raisins in the cupboard. And thirdly, um, juxtaposition, I hate raisins, despise them in all forms. So I thought I would offload these raisins on the blackbird, so kept throwing some out and Beaky kept coming and gobbling them up. It just became tamer and tamer as the year progressed, coming closer and closer. He would land on the table where I was working and take raisins from the corner. I don't think I ever managed to tempt him to eat from my hand, but I guess that's probably good from his perspective. It's good to maintain a certain level of wariness of humans, because, yeah, humans are tricky creatures. A lot of costs in raisins. Worth every penny, though every penny. Eventually it started to switch from him coming to find me when I was outside to trying to find me when I was inside, which got a little bit weird, a uh, little bit of uh, boundary issues maybe. Did I worry I was damaging him? You, you always worry about that when you're, you're interacting with wildlife, but I don't know, it, it didn't seem an issue. Beaky would be outside, looking in through the kitchen window, squawking quite loudly. I don't know enough about Bird's vision to know if he could see me inside, but I feel like maybe he could sense some sort of movement or shadow, a changing in the light perhaps that indicated the presence of a human. Connection. A little bit too much connection, you might argue, because once I left that door to the conservatory open and I found Beaky in here, while I was getting raisins from the kitchen. So I had to gently scoot Beaky outside without frightening him so he didn't fly into a window or get scared. And then 
More raisins, you get, you get the idea. There was raisins. There was lots of sharing of raisins in a one-way direction, away from me to him. Source to sink. Ugh, sink of raisins. <laughs> I presumed Beaky was raising a family. And sure enough, later in the year, eventually, I finally spotted baby Beakies. This is the only photograph of baby Beakies that I managed to get. It is a photograph taken on my phone of a photo being displayed on the back of my camera. There was some sort of deleting or losing of SD card accidents, which basically means the original photo is lost to the sands of time. Towards the end of the summer, Beaky was looking extremely scruffy, and that's when I started to see him less often, um, becoming less tame. And yeah, kind of a pause there on the old interactions. What happens after the blackbirds have raised their young is they undergo a molt. Therefore, his kind of pale patch on the side of the face vanished. So pretty much one male blackbird can't tell it from another. There was no more sort of squawking outside the kitchen window. There was no more tameness or anything like that. Although there was male blackbird in the garden over winter, but sometimes there were several males and it was hard to tell if any of them were dominant. You get a lot of um, migrant blackbirds coming in from kind of Scandinavia area in winter. So, didn't really know. I guess I thought maybe he was dead. But then I guess uh, a happy, happy epilogue to this was this spring, 2021, male blackbird appeared, not as tame as Beaky, but quite, quite tame and very similar behavior. Again, perching on the wheel of the upturned wheelbarrow, hiding in that same bush, coming out for raisins, sometimes hanging around outside here. And surely, surely it's Beaky. I mean, surely it's not another male blackbird that's just learned. I, I, I don't buy it. I reckon, or I choose to believe that it is Beaky and he's still there and he's still eating his raisins. He's still enjoying it. And gosh, his, his digestive system must be forged from steel. Would I do it again? Of course I, of course I'd do it again. I mean, why wouldn't you? And now one viewer has sent in a very special musical tribute all to Beaky. Yeah, hello, this is uh, Ezekiah Spigot. Uh, I would like to say how much I've been enjoying your transmissions um, and I'm going to really miss them, but particularly one aspect um, every time that lovely little bird, Beaky, appeared, um, it lifted my heart. So um, I'm going to really miss him, and I thought I'd write a little song in his honour. Uh, so here it is. We'll always remember your little yellow beak. And the way you chirped Cause you found it hard to speak And it's goodbye Beaky Our parting's full of pain You flew into our lives Now you're flying out again Flapping round's what you did best Like blackbirds far and wide we watched out for you on the screen at the top or on the side And now it's goodbye Beaky, our parting's full of pain You flew into our lives, now you're flying out again Phil would tell us facts galore about flowers, bees and fungus but we didn't listen when you appeared among us So it's goodbye Beaky, our parting's full of pain You flew into our lives, now you're flying out again So it's time to say goodbye to our little feathered friend We knew it couldn't last 
It was always bound to end, and so it's goodbye, Bleaky. Our parting's full of pain. You flew into our lives, now you're flying out again. So flap your wings, sweet Beaky, for the last time fly away. But watch out, you're not dinner for any bird of prey. So now it's goodbye, Beaky, our parting's full of pain. You flew into our lives and gardens, now you're flying out again. Yes, there we are. That's my tribute to little Beaky. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to really miss him. Thank you. And that's it. That is the Ballad of Beaky. And I guess if there's a, a take-home message from this, it's don't leave me alone with a bag of raisins. So thank you very much for listening to me ramble on about blackbirds. That is it for today's episode. Keep going out there. Keep trying to encounter nature see what is out and about on these socially distant walks. Stay safe, thanks again for watching, and goodbye. Well, when all's said and done, I'm not really talking to anyone, am I? It's, uh, it's just another camera angle. It's all fake. It's all fake. Everything's fake. Except... except Beaky. Microphone's gonna pick that up.